play a little guitar before bed. I kind of, some people read a book before bed, some people watch TV. I play guitar. Mm -hmm. so, um, and it's gotten to the point where it, I don't even really, I'm not playing guitar. Like I, kind of, I do for like the first couple of minutes and eventually you zone off and you're fiddling away and you're just kind of listening to shit. And then that's when stuff happens. Every home, um, our second uh, full one. First as a full band, right now with, with, with Billy and Brian. We've been playing for over a year. Like just this, this group. They started doing a lot of stuff at home, like home recordings, mm -hmm. and they started just uh, shooting them over to Chris, and then uh, we were looking into getting a rehearsal space, and uh, we did. We actually ended up with a rehearsal um, spot out in Vernon, mm -hmm. the spot that you've been to. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that you guys have actually like gone away and to record a record, right? That's correct. Yeah. Where, where, where was like that decision? Like, uh, we've been talking about going out and recording for a while. Actually, since I've joined this band, we were like, oh, one day we're gonna go to TJ or like Rosarito by the beach, rent out a house, and then we just, you know, some um, we'll find a way to fund it. And then uh, Edgar just one day came in and was like, you know what? Let's write this album in uh, on this cabin and. San Bernardino, I'm like, oh shit, okay. And we just jumped the gun and been preparing since. Check the 
cable for the amp. It looks like it's shorting out. It not, might not be plugged in all the way. Yeah. yeah. Chris. Chris. Yeah. Hit the overdrive. Like, make it loud as fuck. that when we recorded because we worked with a couple different people and we didn't like using uh, metronomes or or those click track things because um, it didn't feel right mm. like, um, I usually write a lot of the the songs before we make them into a full like recorded song and um, since I do melody and music at the same time it doesn't feel natural sometimes recording one of those things separate from mm. from the other so the best way to to get a good take where it feels good where you don't doubt yourself after like oh i don't know if that was good or not yeah, yeah is yeah. to just do it in the moment mm. when it's like it's as natural as you can that way you don't under you don't really overthink it so it was either you felt it or you won't you didn't that's it that I stumbled upon before bed, brought it in, and started piecing it together. But there was a very um, tricky part we were on the fence about, and that's when things start getting noisy in the song and starts picking up and all that. I had that concept, but we didn't know how long it was gonna go for or how fast it should be, so we were kind of just really, uh, it's the first time we played with anything in that sense. And, Within the song, so it was a uh, it was a fun a fun one I would say. Dark Matter Theory, uh, we got to the crazy part and before we established how long we were going to do it for or anything, uh, Edgar mentioned to me that he wanted me to do some sort of crazy like <laughs> just guitar riff, something in the same vein as like Pixies or something because uh, Joey Santiago, the guitarist, really does a lot of crazy bends and like a lot of feedback stuff which I took inspiration from. Uh, also for the track Goki, and um, so I applied that for the, for the crazy part, and um, I was kind of playing around with a pitch shifter effect um, earlier on, so I just decided to try it out, and after a couple of tries, you know, we kind of figured out something. <laughs> expressing like concern about I think before we even started jamming it 
concern about it like being too weird or like it not coming together like quick enough for the recording session and he was like well yeah we if, if this doesn't come together like we don't have to we can leave it off the album even and it's funny how like we'll talk about things like that but then like suddenly it's the, gonna be the first single yeah <laughs> Because that means we would cut it off like at 140. Yeah, I'm gonna see, maybe I can even shorten it. Let's try it again. Well, okay. this is gonna be an interlude, right? It's not gonna be a full track? Sort of. It's like in between. Can we play it back one more time? It's really, uh, the way I see recording this, like, you already know the songs, you've been studying them for weeks. It's just fighting yourself to get that right take, you know? And as in, since we're doing it all live, it's like, you know, we're all trying to get that same, that right take at the right time. Mm -hmm. we'll just catch it so it's just um, it's a pretty cool process I don't know and it's coming here makes it really even more peaceful because being in a you know in a lockout fucking steamy air fucking sweaty could be frustrating and annoying after a couple takes but this is to me the, the most fun part and yeah. what's coming next which when you just add stuff and make it more creative yeah um, so today we're having Gary do some overdubs on two different tracks. Mm -hmm. Gary plays drums for Forecast, as well as just numerous different, he'll fill in in Long Beach for different bands and stuff. And he's just a good friend of ours. So he actually did some overdubs for an EP uh, that we released a while back. Cool. And what tracks are you guys doing tonight? Asymmetry and The Fall. And where did the decision come uh, to add more percussion to these two tracks? We had we already had the idea of hitting Gary up at some point for percussion anyway, um, but we listened to everything as we were mixing after we got back, and then we sorted out with songs we think would sound really good with Gary on there. And then uh, we shot him over to Gary over the weekend, and he's got a couple of ideas, so we're just stoked to get in the lab and shit. When you guys send over the uh, send over the tracks, do you usually uh, like does Gary have a lot of like freedom? to kind of like come to the table with shit or do you guys have stuff in mind of how you guys want to sound? Total freedom. <laughs> I think he's like really creative just alone so I would like to capture that if anything. If I could endorse this shit I would. I you always have. Yeah because it's the cheapest one and it's, uh, it's so good for me. It, I don't know I like the flavor. It lasts forever dude. It does dude. And it's like a dollar. Shit. Well no it's a dollar for like three. You know, just pop it out. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Anything I can get at the Dollar Tree, I can. 
Dude, on towards the Dollar Tree. Groceries at 99 cent stores where it's at too, man. They Is have it? blueberries. No, oh, dude. They have all kinds of shit. They have blueberries? Blueberries. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a dude that just likes to make music. Like, that's my... I like it's... It became something that I've grown to, to embrace. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't something that I always, like, I was stoked on. You know, I tried quitting so many times, like, from time to time, it still happens where I'll have, like, a shitty month, and I'll be like, or a shitty day or a week, and, like, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> you know, right? No, absolutely. Like, but you just keep doing it, and you keep showing up, and I think, like, to be honest, just, um, I just do it because that's, I gotta do it. If I don't do it, it, start, it starts kind of bone, you know? mm -hmm. like, just naturally.